Well, didn't think I would see it, didn't think they would have the balls enough to do it, didn't think they had enough support to do it, but yes, it's done. What? McCarthy is out. The yeas are 216. The nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Oh my. As Speaker, Matt Gates led the charge. This House of Representatives has exceeded all expectations. Then we definitely need higher expectations. Now what? We're waiting. I'm Jazz Berganzo, and this is What's Next. What's up, everyone? Jazz Berganzo. What's next? Your daily dose, common sense, facts, and salt. Hope you guys are doing well on this hump day, Wednesday. Well, well, well. Like Bigfoot, uh, we only heard things or seen flashes through the trees. We heard rumors running about. We heard possibilities. We heard doesn't have the support. Well, that all got burned yesterday, or last night, shall I say, when one Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, the job he was slobbering for, slathering for, lathering for, mouthwatering for, I'm sure I just made up a few words, but anyway, finally got it. And what did he do with it? Well, I'll talk about that in my thoughts. But he got the boot. He got ousted as speaker by a group of eight led by one Florida representative, Matt Gates, who's a savage, by the way. Oh my, oh my, this should be fun. But, but, a little bit of historical background. And here we go. This comes out of the Washington Post. The last vote to remove a House speaker backfired on the GOP. Yes. It's never been done. This is a first. But Kevin McCarthy was ousted out of the House Speakership Tuesday after a hard right Representative Matt Gates led group called for a vote to vacate the post. In recent history, several speakers have resigned the intra-party threats to a vote their ouster. Notably, John Boehner, who was absolutely worthless, who's now smoking weed on his uh, retirement, and Newt Gingrich in 98. But the House had never removed the speaker and it had never held a floor vote in removing a speaker in well over a century. My, oh my. In 1910, Speaker Joseph Cannon, uh, again, representative uh, Republican out of Illinois, last time you heard that, paved the inter-party vote revolt while unsuccessful hardened divisions that paved the way for a Democratic takeover. Unlike McCarthy, whom lawmakers on both sides of the aisle seemed to delight in calling him weak, Cannon was accused of being a tyrant, according to writer Booth Mooney in Mr. Speaker, four men who shaped the United States House of Representatives. Now we go to this. This comes out of by Bart. Matt Gates' vote succeeds in ousting Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Yes, he's been given das boots. Representative Matt Gates on Tuesday succeeded in his effort to oust Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The vote was held in a roll call in alphabetical order. The motion to remove McCarthy succeeded to 16 to 10. Representative Annie Biggs, Kevin Buck, Tim Burchett, Eli Crane, Bob Good, Nancy Mace, Matt Rosendale, and Matt Gates voted to remove McCarthy. The House voted on Representative Tom Cole's motion to table Gates' move, which was rejected with the support of 10 House Republicans. Regarding his move to oust McCarthy, Gates said, I take no lecture from those who would grovel and bend the knee for lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, hollow this town, and burrow against the future of our future generations. But let's hear a little. My colleague says we passed the strongest border bills in history. Well, guess what? Look at the border right now. We didn't Seven use million to limit or in any other thing to actually get Thank results you, on the border. The border is a disaster. Really something I don't think you're going to be campaigning on that you fixed the border. Facts. You said you streamlined regulations. What the judge <clears throat> from Louisiana doesn't tell you is that all of the regulatory reform he was just bragging about is waivable by the stroke of a pen 
of someone in the Biden White House. Do you really think you've got anything for that? Some in the Biden White House. Not Biden, just someone. Nice. The gentleman from Louisiana said we got the welfare programs that they said that they streamlined with their welfare to work stuff. They're actually going to grow because while they no, he made shit. requirements, they blew out those programs with expanded eligibility. I'm real glad you guys didn't put work requirements on Medicaid. It probably would have resulted in Medicaid expansion. And when it comes to how those raise money, I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have... Oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. I'll be happy to fund my political operation through the work of hardworking Americans, 10 and 20 and $30 at a time. And you all keep showing up at the lobbyist fundraisers and see how that goes for you. I reserve. Absolute savagery by Matt Gates. Cole said on moving and asked McCarthy would plunge us into chaos. Ooh, like climate change. Representative Jim Jordan said that McCarthy had been rock solid as a leader in the House and believes that he kept his word. Really, Jim? Really? Wow. This comes from the Media Research Center. Representative Jim Jordan said, we uh, said the 818th Congress is about three things. Passing bills that need to pass. Fail. Doing the oversight work that need to be done fail stop the omnibus that comes from the united states senate right before the holidays you might have gotten that one but let's hear jim january 3rd we said the 118th congress is about three things pass the bills that need passed do the oversight work that needs to be done and stop the inevitable omnibus that comes from the united states senate right before the holidays kevin mccarthy has been rock solid on all three we have passed the bills we told the American people we would pass. 87,000 IRS agents, that bill, that bill passed. Parents' Bill of Rights, that bill passed. Energy legislation passed. Border security, immigration enforcement legislation, the strongest bill ever to pass the Congress, passed earlier this year. We have done what we told them we were going to do. We can't help but the Senate won't take up those good common sense bills. They'll have to answer to the American people come Election Day. Oversight. True. We have done the oversight that we're supposed to do. Because of our oversight, we know that parents were targeted by the Department of Justice. Because of our oversight, we know that 51 former intel officials misled the country weeks before the most important election we have. And because of our oversight, the Disinformation Governance Board at the Department of Homeland Security is gone. Facts. Because of our oversight, the memo attacking pro-life Catholics has been rescinded. Because of our oversight, unannounced visits to Americans' home by the Internal Revenue Service has stopped. That happened under Speaker McCarthy. Notice how, when Jim Jordan mentioned these things, that these are all retroactive. These are all reactive measures. These are not proactive it's not that Jim Jordan came out prior to Kevin McCarthy saying, hey, well, you know what? We need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But then again, I'm just speaking facts. But anyway, anyway. Representative Mas Thomas Massey called the move to ask McCarthy terrible. He called it referendum in, order, in regular order. And if it fails, then no one will try it again. He added that McCarthy made the majority more fair and even which included putting conservatives on the influential rules committee. Now that he was pressured into doing McCarthy didn't want to do it. He got forced and he got pinned to the wall because McCarthy opened his mouth and said, well, we got to have everybody at the seat of the table. Don't we? Yeah, you do. And they hold your ass to it. Representative Ashley Henson said the lawmakers could either be chaos agents or get back to work. Majority Leader Steve Scalise said McCarthy could open up the process and allow members to be more engaged on the floor. Representative Gary Graves, McCarthy ally, said disgusting for Gates to fundraise from his move to oust McCarthy. Really? Did he? During the debate on the resolution to remove McCarthy, Gates, said, uh, Gates had to speak from the Democratic side of the chamber because allies of McCarthy blocked the Republican microphones on the House floor. Wow. They wanted to take their ball and go home. Pathetic. Gates first uh, started teasing 
that he was used a motion to remove McCarthy after Speaker led the House to pass a continuing resolution, ACR, a stopgap spending bill through the House. A number of things that Jim Jordan mentioned uh, they were able to do. But like I said, these were, um, these were reactive moves. These were not proactive moves. In my opinion, the only thing that McCarthy got done was give 40,000 hours of the J6 tapes to one Tucker Carlson, formerly of Fox News. And of course, Tucker did expose a lot of the nonsense that went on on January 6th. But at the end of the day, McCarthy's gone. And now the question needs to be asked, must be asked, is that Gates led this team of eight, this merry band of eight, to get rid of McCarthy. Now what? Who do you put in its place? Who do you recommend? Who do you have the votes for to put in its place? Notice one name missing out of that group. One Chip Roy out of Texas. You didn't hear from him. But on a recent um, Steve Dates show, Chip unleashed a fury that I haven't seen a representative show such emotion, raw nerve, as Chip Roy did, and uh, I recommend you check it out. But, again, the question bears, what now? Does Matt Gates step in as speaker? Do, does he have enough vote? Does he want the job now? Daddy pushed so hard to get McCarthy out. Does he want it? Or who does he recommend? Also, whoever you recommend, and this is just me, must have no ties to Trump. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Nine. Must have nothing to do with Donald Trump. No ties. Because you know what's going to happen. You're going to have another McCarthy. You're going to have another yes man. And that is what the speakership should not be about. That is not what Congress should be about. This guy, whoever you, this guy or gal, let me make it fair. Whoever gets voted in, a speaker must play it down the middle. I've got no ties to you. I've got no ties to you. I, my only ties, <clears throat> excuse me, are to the American people. And I know that's, that's, that's hard to hear. I know it's hard to hear. You're like, Jazz, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Actually doing the will of the people in 2023? Are you insane? Yes, call me insane. Yeah. But it must be done. Oh, 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 let me not forget that in the interim basis, one Patrick McHenry out of North Carolina is going to be temporary speaker. And it just so happens that this one Patrick McHenry happens to be a very close ally of one Kevin McCarthy. So take that as you will. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Bergonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a thing. And we'll see you next time. Peace.